Hi guys and welcome back to our Football Manager Managing Sunderland series on the channel. This is episode two. In the first episode, of course, we did take over Sunderland. We went through pre-season and we also played our first championship game of the season where we did get a whopping 4-3 win against Ipswich, which was a it was a mental game. I'd highly suggest going back to the first episode if you do want to watch the highlights of that one because it was a pretty crazy game. But in this episode, I've been taking on quite a lot of your guys' suggestions in terms of transfers, things I should do. A lot of you guys seem to be quite happy with the way I'm going at the minute, considering I am a bit of a noob. Um, I am very rusty when it comes to football manager. But one thing that you guys did put out, I did notice a comment that I'm going to do immediately, is Chris Rigg is apparently is still on a, um, a youth contract. I think I can actually offer him a sort of a first team adult contract. I hope that's the case anyway, because at the minute, apparently given his age, he can quite easily be Nick's offers for absolute peanuts. So I'm hoping that I can offer him uh, a decent contract and keep him on board. So I'm currently speaking with Riggs' agent. He said he's delighted to hear that we are interested in keeping him on board. Here's what we'd like to get done. Uh, we'll expect to be considered a breakthrough prospect in order to realise the potential. We want a wage of between 2.6 and 3.2. We want to sign a contract until 2027. I will be buzzing with that deal. I would be more than happy to do that for Chris Rigg. That's actually ideal to get him on a four or five year contract on minimum, on minimal wages as well. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, we'll agree with it all. Fantastic. Let's end chat. Then we'll go into a contract, um, a contract offer for Rigg. Absolutely happy with all this because I'm probably going to give him more game time than he probably needs because I am such a fan and I want to really bring him through this season. So I'll keep that as a promise. He will be a, a breakthrough prospect. Uh, he's playing time between, t well, t the 2025-26 season. He wants to be a fringe player. He's probably going to be in the starting eleven by that point, you would think. Given his age, we can only offer him three years, but it will tie him down. So this will keep him there until 2027. And he seems to be happy with this. He did want to pretty much over double his wages after 20 games, which I did remove. And he's still happy with that. So there we go. Chris Rigg has been tied down to a long term contract. I believe that is the correct contract. He's not still on a, a youth contract. Hopefully that is the deal done now. And we do have Chris Rigg as a Sunderland player for at least the next three years. I think depending on how things go over the next season or so, or when he does come of age, um, we'll offer him a new deal as well. Also, one thing I am going to do, and I'm going to go in for a striker. Now, I know I did say in the first episode, I want to give everyone a chance to like to Hamia and Royce in. Of course, we've got Mayenda, who is currently injured for the next two or three months. And he's sitting with the under-21s at the minute, recovering there, nursing his injury. We have Burstow, who is on loan. And although I do like Burstow as a football manager player, I don't really want to be getting uh, too much or get too invested in a loan player just for to send him away anyway. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather have someone who's our own and try and invest in a youth or a younger striker in that sense. And one player that has come up a lot, and I do believe is a bit of a, a known player to the sort of football manager community, and it is a player called Aravina um, from Chile. Is a young lad, 20 years of age. Is worth between 3.2 and 7 million. We have more than enough there. He is already wanted by, I think it's Orlando, is it? He is wanted by Orlando. If you just have a look at some of these, I can easily scout him. But you can see already that he's going to be a really, really good player. Agility between 13 and 18 there. Uh, dribbling between 14 and 19, technique 12 to 17, long shots 10 to 15, finishing 10 to 16, just for his age. Look at all these. Look, this is mad. This is a fantastic, fantastic investment, I think. He can play as a striker or on the right hand side of midfield, but I think I would put him down the centre and utilise him that way. I'm going to go straight in for it and make a cheeky offer and see what happens. He's worth between 3.2 and 7 million. I'm going to try and be a bit cheeky. Maybe do a 2.5. See what happens there. Suggested 2.5. And they believe it's unacceptable. So we're going to go again. We'll do 3 million. Try 3 million. Make the offer. Oh, I thought we'd be cheeky there. I thought we'd be able to get away with it. Obviously not. Right, okay. So we've rejected a 3 million offer. I'll go in with 3.5 maybe. Oh, he's got a... I didn't even realise. It's probably right there somewhere. But I didn't realise he does have uh, a clause. He does. I didn't realise. He has a minimum free release clause of 3.2 million. That is an absolute bargain. Okay, so that one has to be accepted. Absolutely cracking. Loving that. That's brilliant. <laughs> 3.2 million for this lad. And he could be an absolute star for us. Okay, uh, well, this is awkward. I've just made a big deal of this. And uh, 
Apparently, Aravina has absolutely no interest in talking to us. I have been well and truly humbled. Didn't want him anyway. Dickhead. And Pembele has been injured for the next sort of two, three days with a bruised shin, so he probably won't start. To be fair, I'm not too arsed about the whole Aravina thing. It was quite exciting. The thought of it was quite exciting. But now that that idea has been completely torn away from us, I am quite happy that I am basically forced into giving the likes of Hamia and Royce an opportunity. Mayenda will come back um, from injury as well. I know we do our burst, so, but like I say, not really a fan of giving so much investment into a youth player for someone else just to give them back. And I do believe that the likes of Hamia and Roycin, maybe Mayenda can eventually become better than Bursto. But now we are going to be going into the Carabao Cup, the first round of the Carabao Cup. And I've gone with a heavily changed side, rotated side. Still a very good side though, mind you. With Bishop in goal, Hume, Triantis, O'Nine and Huggins across the back. We have Daniel and Chris Rigg in the middle. We have Bart on the right-hand side. Bellingham playing as the number 10. We have Royce playing on the left-hand side of midfield, or at least a bit of a winger, with Luis Hamir or Luis Semedo up top. So hopefully that should be enough to get us through to the next round. But we are playing Wigan, who in real life are having a terrible season in League One. But we'll see how they do in this game. Huggins, Job, Rig. Oh, that's a poor pass there from Rig. Now, are Wigan going to counter-attack here, or can we nick it off him? Come on, lads. He's gone for goal from distance. What the hell's he doing there? Bishop collects with ease. Now, can we start a counter-attack of our own with Trey Hume on this right side? We need some of these players to show us why they should be starting championship games. Oh, Rig. Oh, he's won it back, though, to be fair. After a couple of little early mistakes from Rig, we've pumped it forward. It's looking really hopeful at the minute, but it's Royston now. Go on, son. Ukraine bolt down the left-hand side. Back to Rig. Go on. Neil. And again, Joe from distance and it's in. It looked like it may have took a deflection, but it's gone under the keeper. Yes, it did take a deflection. It's uh, Tom Pierce own goal. I think that really should have been awarded to Joe, if I'm honest. It only took a tiny deflection. It looked like it was going on target anyway, but we are in the lead. Get in. Well in him here now. After pressing him, he wins the ball off him. Still him here. Going all himself here. Oh, that is terrible. From here. For, sorry, from him here. Oh, they've lost it there. And it is Abdullah Bar. Hume. Triantis, all the way back to Bishop, this is it, nice, nice football, don't mess around with it, don't mess around with it, here we go, I like how calm and composed we're looking at the moment on the ball, please don't make me eat my words as soon as I say that, Neil breaking forward, Job, and again to Abdullah Bar. he is onside, it's in, it's 2-0, and it's Abdullah Bar who gets it, 34 minutes in. Come on. Half-time, 2-0. And it has been a really even game, if I'm honest with you. If you have a look here, we've had six shots to their four. Yes, we've had four on target to their one. But they have looked just as dangerous as, as we have at times. Hopefully, we don't throw this away in the second half. We will make a few more subs about halfway through that second half. Get some minutes into some other players' legs. Pierce now gets the ball in. Get it away, please, lads. Please get it away. I can see them scoring here, you know. I really can, and it's a brilliant finish from Humphreys. 2-1. Jesus Christ. I am going to bring Royce in off that left-hand side and stick Clark on. Give us another option on that left side of midfield. Making several more changes now. Equus, come on. Roberts has. Now, here's a ball in. Can we keep it in? Oh, no, we can't. Four minutes added on. Can we please just see this out, lads? Get us through to the next round of the Carabao Cup. And there we go. We've done it. A nice 2-1 win. It wasn't quite as simple as I thought it may have been. But either way, we get away with it. That's two wins from two. The Saudi Army marches on. And in the second round of the Carabao Cup, we have been drawn against Spurs. Which will be really interesting, to say the least, to welcome the likes of Spurs to test our side at the stage of my life. But it would have been nice to get a nice easy run and get a few games under our belt in the cup because I think that's where we're going to that's where we're going to be uh, booted out and there is confirmation of Chris Rigg signing his pre-contract deal the deal will see Rigg sign a three year professional contract when he turns 17 okay so that's how it works I wasn't too sure how it works as soon as he hits 17 then it will trigger the three year deal which is really really nice but at least now we know that he's 100% going to be a Sunderland player when he hits the age of 17 but now back to championship action of course our first game we did Win by four goals to three against Ipswich, which was a great win at the stage of my life. But now we go away from home to Preston. Where are Preston? They're ninth in the league. They drew their opening game 
of their season. And this is the lineup we're going to be going with against Preston with Patterson, Hume, Ballard, O'Nine, Huggins, Neil Eckwert, Roberts, Oshish, Clark, and Tomido. Pretty much the same starting eleven that did beat Ipswich on the first game. Of course, here we have a look at the. Uh, Social media. Huggins starting is a terrible call. How is it? It's been decent, Huggins. Ballard is starting good. Whatever. I'm not listening to you, knobheads. <laughs> Huggins with the throw in. Just 13 minutes into the game. Hamia back to Huggins. Back to Clark. Lovely football. It's Hamia. It's a goal. It's a beautiful goal as well. Brilliantly worked. And Hamia gets his first goal of the season. Earlier in the episode, we were looking to maybe bring another striker in. Because I won't lie, my confidence was a little bit low. With the strikers we do have, although I know that they do have potential, I thought we need to bring someone who's a little bit more ready-made. But maybe we already have the striker we need on our hands in Lewis Hermia. Come on. Go on, Roberts. He's going all the way. Keep going, son. Keep going. Oh, and it's wide of goal. What a chance and what a run that was from Paddy Roberts. Oh, we've made a mess there from the back. Oh, thank God. They've made a mess of their attack. Second half is underway. I think I will bring on Job shortly for Alshish. He isn't playing as well as he has done in previous games. And Job definitely deserves an opportunity. A fair crack of the whip. But uh, Hamia does have the ball now. Back to O'Neill. Lovely football this. Neil onto Equa from distance. Tries to find Robert Shirley. Oh, what a chance that should have been too. Come on, man. You've got to take them, Paddy. Job Roberts. Nice football this is Hamia now. Taking on his man. Go on. Cut inside. Cut inside. Will someone help him out? Oh, it's been... Oh, I thought he had the ball nicked off him, but he's managed to get it back. It is Roberts. Has a penalty been given? A penalty has been given. We rewarded one in the first game of the season. Clock converted that one. Is he going to convert this one to make it 2-0 on the road? Come on, Clark. Oh, he saved it. Easy save for Woodman between the sticks. Oh, if we somehow don't get away with three points now, I'm going to be livid with these. Equa. It is rigged now. The substitute, he finds Roberts. He does find Hamia. Is he onside? I think he is. Is he? He is. It's 2 0. We've sealed the deal. No, we haven't. Fuck's sake. It's always so late. I was staring for the linesman. Couldn't find him. And it takes fucking five minutes to let us know that it's offside. And I look at it. I swear to God, if we don't win this game now, I'm speaking it into existence, aren't I? Because we've dominated. Please, yes, is that it? Is that it? Yes, it is. 1-0, a hard-fought victory, but deserved absolutely at the Deepdale to make it two wins from two in the championship and three wins from three in our Sunderland career. The mastermind is at work. The mastermind is at work. And we've just received news that Ellis Taylor, who's currently on loan at Northampton, we've only just sent him out. He's got himself an injury three to four months. It looks like he's going to be out. I'll send a specialist at the cost of 9k. We look after our youth. We look after our lot. Hopefully, he makes a swift recovery. And we have just received news that Sirkin has resumed full training, which is fantastic. We really do need the numbers uh, in the wing-back position, or full-back, should I say, either way. But now we are going to be taking on Rotherham. We'll be welcoming them to the Stadium of Light. Rotherham currently in 23rd after a poor start to their season. They'll be hoping to get at least a point at the Stadium of Light, you would think. But we have made a couple of changes ourselves. Sirkin will be starting ahead of Huggins. He is uh, ha always had to take a late fitness test, but he should be okay for this game. Bellingham will replace our Sheesh as well. You might be thinking, what am I doing with Bradley Dak? I haven't involved Dak in any of the matchday squads because every is it week or so, you do get a, um, a report back from training. And every single training report I ever had, Bradley Dak has had the worst rating. It's always been sort of 6.2 or lower. And it's actually Job who keeps on coming is the best trainer. So Bradley Dak, he's not seen the squad for the time being. And that's personally because I don't like a player who doesn't train well. And away we go. Back at the Stadium of Lights. Come on. Let's get a third win from three in the championship. They've put ball over the top now. It's a great chance for them. And we've conceded. First time we have gone behind this season. Oh, God. Not nice. Not nice at all. After a really bright start, we've conceded. Can we get a quick equaliser here? That'd be ideal. It is Equa from distance. Pulls it back to 0-9. Not sure why he's gone that route, but it is Job now. Pulls it back for Equa. Come on, come on, lads. Have a crack, have a crack. 
Neil, Roberts, he hits it, it's in, it's 1-1, get in, what a finish that is from Paddy Roberts, Rotherham thought, yes, we'll come here, we'll give you a game, and Roberts said, piss off, sit down, <laughs> come on, come on, can we get ourselves in the lead just before half time, it's Equa who strikes it and he's hit the bar, what an effort that was from Equa, I've given the lads a bollocking at half time, and it seems to have motivated them somewhat, Hopefully, they come out flying in the second half. Oh, no. This isn't good, is it? Rathbone with the corner, and we've conceded 2-1. Will this be our first defeat of the season? I think I might have to make a couple of changes here. It's not looking good today. I'm going to bring off Jack Clark and put Burnett on. I've changed the formation a little bit as well, because what I had done for this game, which I did fail to mention, is that I pushed our central midfielders a little bit for the, sorry, further forward. And I think that's given them a bit of space in between the lines. And I think I've made a real mess of that. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I've pumped it long and it's done us there. It's Nombe again. Gets it in. Is that offside? I thought it was offside. But it hasn't been given. And we are heading towards our first defeat of the season. Shite defending that. Straight over our full backs. Caught in behind again. 3-1 to Rotherham, and that's it. It was always going to happen. We're going to get our first defeat at some point, but that was utter shit, that. That was really shit, and I'll be giving it to the lads as well. That was shocking. Simply put, wasn't good enough. That's exactly what the assistant recommends, and that is exactly what I agree with. So after that game, just to add to our miseries, there's a lot of rumours surrounding Jack Clark, and this time it's to do with Luton. Is there any truth to rumours that Luton could make a move for Jack Clark? I'll respond to it, and I'll just tell them that no one is coming in for Clark, or at least I'm not allowing that to happen. I'll just say, if Rob Edwards and Luton watching, he's not going anywhere, sorry, that's it, end of chat. Absolutely not, not entertaining that one bit. And now we do have another notification that Pembele is going to be injured for a couple of days. He seems to get injured every other day, he's circling them, Pembele, then circling them, Pembele. They just keep getting injured for a few days at a time. What is wrong with these lads? Now for the Friday night kickoff, there is a game going on in the Championship. And it was Hull who beat Bristol City by four goals to two. And we are just about to go up against Coventry, who only have a point to their tally in the Championship so far. But in saying that, we just took on Rotherham and they were in 23rd place. And look what happened there. We need to be way, way more on our game against Coventry. Because these early stages of the season, they don't really mean anything in terms of form. Players just finding the feet, gelling together. Yeah, it's not a brilliant start from Coventry. But uh, I'd probably take a draw away from home against them because I think they should be up there come the end of the season in terms of the top six, maybe. Pushing towards the playoffs, at least. And even though we did get beat against Rotherham, we are going to go largely unchanged. Although, I'm going to reintroduce Alshish and drop Job, who wasn't fantastic against Rotherham. It's going to be a big battle, though, because Alshish keeps coming on. He does really well, then he has an off game. And then Job comes in, he does well, then he's a bit of an off game. So this is what it's going to be like. There's going to be a lot of chopping and changes until I'm 100% set and certain on certain players but hopefully this is enough for us to take on Coventry and get ourselves a win Bidwell with the throw there get it away lads please just knock it away don't piss around with it there at the back I knew they were going to give it away it was so obvious come on get it away man please you keep trying to give it back to him every opportunity we're trying our best to give it back to Coventry Fucking hell, lads, come on. If you look, we've got 72% possession at the moment, dominating in terms of keeping hold of the ball, but we're doing nothing with it. Cirkin, I think, has a bruised shoulder. I'm going to swap him with Pembele. Equa now. It is Dan Neal from distance. Try to find Roberts. It's in. There we go. That is more like it. Please don't you dare say that's offside. Get in. Beautiful finish. And our dominance in possession finally pays off. Like I said, Pembele is now going to go to left back. It kept popping up saying Sirkin has a bruised shoulder. If we keep him on, it could get worse. So I don't want to risk it. Pembele naturally a right back, but he can play on the left as well. But now here is Jack Clark driving forward. Can we add a quick second here, maybe? It's still Jack Clark. Cook inside for Alshish. Oh, why has he gone for goal there? Poor decision making that was. What the hell are they doing here? We had such a good opportunity. Jesus Christ. Shite. Utter shite that. Roberts thrown out, driving forward, come on, still Roberts, he's going to go alone here, still Patrick Roberts, and it's 
wide of goal. We do manage to get through to half time, a goal to the good. I'm going to leave it as it is, but if you look, they are getting plenty of opportunities. Only a couple on target out of their six shots. We've had three. We've had 67% possession, so we're dominating the game, which is exactly what I want to see in terms of keeping hold of the ball. Go out there and give the fans their money's worth. Come on, lads. Come on. I am going to bring on Royce in. Rig is going to come on as well. See if we can see the game out. Maybe I shouldn't have brought in Rig in a situation like this. I do slightly fear that I've put him in a bit of a difficult scenario here. But I want him to get that kind of experience in a tough game like this. Come on, lads. Just run the game out. Run the game out. Look at the amount of shots they're getting here. Not quite on target as of yet, thankfully. Please, just see the game out. Run all the way to the 90th minute. Come on. Come on. We need to get back to winning ways here. Have we pulled off a masterclass here? Come on. Is it a masterclass? It is a masterclass. Come on. 1 0. A brilliant victory away from home against Coventry. Get in. And that victory does see us up to fourth in the league. A really solid start to the season so far for us. But our next game is going to be in the Carabao Cup, the second round. And we do, of course, have Spurs. We'll be bringing them to the stage of my life. And we are going to be going second string. It's only fair. I went second string for the first round. It will be quite nice to try and test our first team against a club like Spurs. However, I think it's unfair that we did play a second string in the first round. To just completely get rid of him in the second would not be fair. And also, only a couple of days later, two or three days later, we're playing Southampton, who are absolutely flying at the moment. So, we need our players to be fit. And this is the team we're going to go with against Spurs. As you can see, it is massively, massively rotated with Bishop, Pembele, Seal, Triantis, Huggins. Dan Neal is the only player from the previous games. I wanted at least one lad in there. He is the captain. He's going to be captaining the side this evening, Chris Rigg alongside him, Bar, Pritchard, Bennett and Roycin up top as well. We're probably going to get battered, don't get me wrong. But it's a lot of decent experience for these lads and a bit of game time as well. Oh, straight away, they found their way through and over the bar, fortunately. Pritchard with a free kick. Oh, and it's just over the bar. <laughs> that might be something we have to rely on playing for set pieces. It's a lovely play, and it is Son now, driving down the left side, no foul lads, no foul, please, get into him, again this is cracking football, can't get anywhere near him at the moment, this is good stuff, is he offside, he is offside, I thought Son did come on, oh sorry, come back from an offside position, and I was proved correct, 15 minutes in though, and that's a, already a scare for us, we managed to nick it off him though, in a decent position, it is Dewey, down by the corner flag, give it, it is Chris Rigg now. Can Chris go for goal, he gives it in. Royston shots blocked and then Neil volleys it way over the bar. We're making a game of this, you know. We're making a game of this and we're, you know, we're doing decent <laughs> considering the circumstances. Oh, it's good football now. Johnson on the right hand side, loads of space and it's in. Couldn't deal with it at all, poor clearance. And just as we're getting a little glimmer of hope, Think we might be able to sneak a goal and get ourselves in front. We go and concede. And here we go. I did speak it into existence. I literally just said, oh God, 2 0, fair play. Into the second half now. And to be fair, we've made a half decent account of ourselves. If you have a look at the stats, it isn't absolutely terrible. We haven't been utterly destroyed or battered. But uh, you can definitely tell that these are the. Premier League opposition, and they've just brought on Hoiberg as well in the middle. Um, Saw come off injured. Ball over the top. Can we get it away? It's knocked on to Veltz, and it's deflected just wide. Good defending. That's a great chance. Lovely, lovely football, and that should have been 3 0 to seal the deal. But it isn't to be that time. And there we go. We have been officially knocked out of the Carabao Cup. It was decent whilst it lasted. Albeit not very long at all, but we didn't expect to win that game. Look at the stats. They're 10 shots to our four. Possession-wise, you know, didn't utterly batter us, I guess. But, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Two nil to Spurs. But this is where we are going to leave the episode, guys. We will leave it on 
the championship table there. We're currently in fourth place, winning three out of the four opening league games. We're just about to hit transfer deadline day as well. So I'll leave it there just in case any of you guys do want me to go in for someone. If there is anyone in particular or if you want me to just leave it as it is for the time being and then we'll maybe re revisit this in January, let me know in the comments down below. But if you are enjoying, please smash that like button for me. It really does help out. And if you are new, subscribe if you haven't already. Again, that really helps as well. But for now, take care. Thanks for watching. Stay jammy.